He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Hello, my name's uh, Ron Gresh and this is my wife, Elizabeth Gresh. Hi. And uh, we would like to take the opportunity today to share our story uh, with you, our friends, and uh, people that will see this video, we believe in time to come. It's a story uh, of uh, from tragedy to triumph. It's a testimony of what God done in and through the lives of this little family. And so it all begins when we came to South Australia in 1976, Elizabeth and our two little boys, Simon and Lee. Uh, to make a, a new life for ourselves here and um, in that time that we we're here uh, everything just seemed to be going fine uh, we were established in work in a home and a good school for the children and uh, things were just going along nicely and then one day while the boys were at play in the backyard uh, our youngest son Lee uh, had an accident on the on the backyard swing where he injured his little finger. Uh, the injury uh, didn't appear to be much, but over time and uh, taking him to the doctors, uh, the situation didn't improve with his finger. And um, it was necessary for the doctors to say, let's take him into hospital and we'll do an exploratory operation on this finger. Well, as things went, uh, Lee was taken into a hospital on that appointed day and the operation took place and um, they had to amputate his little finger. It was known to be a Ewing's tumour and uh, when Elizabeth had been there and she'd left the hospital and come home, was making her way home, she came into the workplace that afternoon and told me uh, what had happened. Uh, she was very distressed about the whole situation and I tried to comfort her as best that I could but it didn't bring any peace to her and um, and so she left and it wasn't long before I was to follow and come home but on the way home she had to shop in, stop into the shops and pick up some goods that evening and uh, as she did she got out of the car and walked across the car park and there was a friend uh, from school another mum who had seen her and could see that she was troubled deeply and uh, she said Elizabeth what's wrong and she went on to uh, explain what had happened to our son and uh, what had happened. And so immediately her friend, Margaret, she said, Elizabeth, you need to have Jesus Christ in your life. And Elizabeth replied, yes, I know. And so she prayed the sinner's prayer that afternoon. But during the course of the days and the, and the months ahead, um, Elizabeth was attending church at St Luke's uh, Anglican Church at Modbury and she was uh, finding the peace and that that she needed in the Lord and um, she asked me to come with her to church on Sunday but I said nah sorry love that's not for me if, if you're feeling um, you know if it's doing something for you well and good and um, but she wasn't satisfied with my answer and she continued to uh, just keep at me and at me and, and to wear me down. And so I thought, well, I'll go just once and then that will keep the peace in the house. And so I went on this Sunday morning with her and uh, we're sitting in the very back row. And um, during the course of the service that morning, they began to sing and uh, give praises to God in that meeting. And as soon as they uh, started to sing, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I just uh, broke down. I didn't understand why, I didn't know what was happening to me, but I just was, I just broke down and I began to cry and, and weep and was looking for a way to get out of the church as quick as possible. Yeah, I came again the next Sunday and um, the service went through its uh, procedure 
and they played the same thing over again. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. It was just like a record being replayed and the same emotions and the same uh, things that I felt within my heart were all there again and I just broke down completely and I just couldn't understand what it was happening. Uh, I know now that it was God, I know it's the Holy Spirit today that was uh, moving in my heart and was bringing conviction of sin in my life. And so anyway, we continued the fellowship and then we were asked one day by a friend of Elizabeth's to come to the opening of a new church uh, that was about to take place. And so we accepted that invitation. It was to the Paradise Community Church and now both of our little boys were being taught the Word of God and both of them were baptised in water as were we. Having found a new freedom, Ron and Elizabeth would soon need the consolation of their faith to help them cope with a devastatingly cruel event that was about to change not only their personal lives but many others also. He was rushed to hospital and tests concluded that a reoccurrence of cancer had returned, spreading to his lung. A course of treatment was set in motion for a period of time. There were other things occurring in Little Lee. He was drawing closer to God in his prayer and the Word, and he was growing in leaps and bounds. He just seemed to be moving so, so fast in the things of God and understanding and revelation uh, that it was just surpassing our understanding of what was happening to him. And so his faith was growing and we had continual prayer vigils in the home and there was fellowship there where people would come and they would pray with us and support us. But, uh, and there was just ongoing prayer. Uh, we wanted to see a breakthrough come for his healing and deliverance from this cancer. But in this time, Ali was growing stronger spiritually and God was using him mightily. In spite of the sickness, in spite of the disease, he would be going to, church, uh, to school and he would be sharing the gospel with his, with his mates and his friends at school. He was sharing it with his neighbours and God used him and he was leading uh, other children to the Lord uh, from the school, uh, mothers, parents of these children were being saved and so God was using him in spite of something that was quite tragic. God was bringing glory to himself by using this little little boy who hadn't yet turned 10 years of age. And so this continued to go on. Uh, people would come to the home and visit. We would have pastors come and there to pray with him but he would pray with them also. He would prophesy into their life the Spirit of God was moving through this child mm -hmm. and was being used for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. um, we seen the minister from the Anglican Church. He'd come and visited many times to pray with Lee, but Re Lee would pr end up praying for him, laying hands on him, and he was baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. And um, we just seen the power of God manifest at these, on many of these occasions. And so time went on uh, in the course of, uh, of treatments and things on days that were good and days that were hard. And um, the doctors had said, we're gonna have to operate and remove Lee's lung. Uh, and um, this was necessary because of the cancer that had been in there and stopped it from spreading. And so that they, they explained the operation to us and to Lee and they said that we were going to take it out and it's going to be seven week recovery time uh, from this operation for you to come through. And uh, Lee was very bold in his faith as he spoke to the doctors. He knew, he knew his God and he knew where he was in God. And he said to the doctors, he says, no, I'm not going to be here for seven weeks. He said, on the seventh day, I will walk out of this place. And that was his confession of his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the operation took place. He spent a couple of days in the um, in intensive care. Mm. And then after that, on the seventh day, he walked from that place uh, under his own power. 
Uh, they were amazed because they looked at his back. Uh, there was no radiation burns on his back. And where they broke the bones uh, from his ribs to go in and to remove the lung, the bones were completely healed. There was no sign of any breakage in, that, in those bones at that seventh day. And so we've seen the miracle power of God manifest uh, uh, in and through Lee and what God was doing. And yet still in this story that uh, uh, was not finished by any means, uh, we continued to go on. Lee continued to seek after God. Mm -hmm. And um, as we could see this cancer attacking his body and different manifestations coming into his bones, uh, we had knew that it was um, it was affecting his whole body but still he would lock himself in his room and he would begin to cry out to God and um, and the power of God would come into the room he wouldn't let mum or dad or anyone into the room but he would be there crying out to God and God would come and meet him he would get up out of his wheelchair and he would stand in the presence of God and the kid, he couldn't normally do that in the normal situations we were a family there that were seeing and sharing in this what was happening and uh, it gave us something to look forward to and something for us to uh, to look to in, in the Lord that we thought well if our son can come to this place in God then it's not impossible for us to get to this place in him oh, amen. and so time went on and um, it came to the time uh, in 1984, at, at, at that Christmas time, that uh, we had to call for the ambulance at this time, and they took Lee into hospital and brought him to the uh, intensive care unit there. He was in the hospital and struggling for breath, and eventually the uh, medical staff brought his uh, breathing uh, into some form of normality, and there was staff all around the bed, nurses and doctors, his body, which was all crippled with the cancer and the lumps and the bumps, at that particular moment of time, his body just went back to what we would call normal. All the lumps, the bumps, the puffiness, all just disappeared, all at that, that, that point of time. I'm unable to quote it, but I spoke of being in the wonderful presence of God. There was no other place better to be than in God's presence. And so when we um, bring the word of Psalm 80 form and we open it, it still touches our heartstrings and we still respond to that word in the way we know Lee would want us to respond as a mum and dad. Close to God in relationship and that gave us something to really hang on to and say, right, we're going to live our life out for Jesus and we're gonna serve him all of our days. And God has seen fit to be able to use us and allow us to go into other nations, um, in the, the mission field in India on more than one occasion. And then just last year again to Serbia. And God opened the doors for us to go into that nation, to the Romani Gypsies. And uh, on going to uh, Serbia at that time, God spoke the word again and he gave a word to our, our pastor and that word was from Luke 21 verse 13 and it told us not to be concerned about what we were going to say before when but God said that it would be through our testimony that we would speak mm. and that is exactly what had happened because God had spoken and so as we went into that nation and spent time with, that, uh, with the Romani people God allowed that testimony, which I have just shared with you today, to be used again for his glory. He allowed us to use it not once, but several times, where it had impact upon the lives of people. We were in a city called Yagadin, and we were to go there on a Sunday morning to that service, but the service was cancelled that morning because they had lost one of the a children from the church who had died the previous day from cancer who was only 21 years of age a very young person and so we thought there would be no chance for us to go but the pastor there said please come on the Monday night we will have a service not knowing who was going to turn up because of the grief and everything else that had happened the day previous and so we ventured up there and we and we were there and we got together and we prayed and that night at 6 p.m. 
they packed the church out it just people just came and once again God said Ron share that testimony the testimony about about you about Elizabeth about the whole family about Lee and so I began to share that testimony to the people there of Yagadeen and God moved upon that testimony and at the end of the time of sharing a pastor that was traveling with us his name was Sheriff he got up and spoke in their tongue in their language to the people he was like rounding off and then he came down from the platform and we embraced one another with such love and such compassion for one another and then he began to share a story with me and to Elizabeth he says you know Ron he said I had a little boy who was 10 years of age and he also had cancer and he says such was the tragedy and the trauma that struck my wife and myself he said I held a gun to my head to blow my brains out because we couldn't cope but we cried out to God and God answered that prayer and he raised up our 10 year old son and he says today I'm here he says I resigned from my job as a music professor and he says now I'm a pastor and I'm serving the Lord for the rest of my days and so I say to you today out there I say to the people out there today it's no matter what you're going through no matter what your situation is no matter what it is there is a God of love who sent his son Jesus Christ into the world to die for you on the cross to take care of